Welcome back to part three of our AZ-104 preparation series. Let's keep moving toward Azure Administrator success. Question 21. You have an Azure subscription that contains a container group named Group 1. Group 1 contains two Azure container instances, as shown in the following table. You need to ensure that Container 2 can use CPU resources without negatively affecting Container 1. What should you do? This question is about managing CPU resources between containers in Azure. Think of it like sharing a computer between two programs. We want to make sure one program doesn't slow down the other. The key here is understanding how resource requests and limits work together. Options. A. Increase the resource limit of Container 1 to 3 CPUs. B. Increase the resource limit of Container 2 to 6 CPUs. C. Remove the resource limit for both containers. D. Decrease the resource limit of Container 2 to 2 CPUs. Picture this like a restaurant kitchen. Container 1 is like a chef who needs exactly two burners and has reserved exactly two burners. Request equals limit. Container 2 is like another chef who needs three burners, but could use up to four if available. The question is asking, how do we let the second chef use extra burners when available without taking away the first chef's guaranteed burners? Correct answer, C. Remove the resource limit for both containers. Here's the step-by-step -step reasoning. When you remove resource limits, containers can still get their requested resources, their guaranteed minimum, but they can also use additional CPU resources when available. Container 1 requested two CPUs, so it will always get those two CPUs. This protects it from being negatively affected. Container 2 requested three CPUs, so it gets those guaranteed, but without limits, it can use even more when the system has spare capacity. Why the other options are wrong. Increasing Container 1's limit to three CPUs doesn't help Container 2 get more resources. Increasing Container 2's limit to six CPUs doesn't solve the core issue of resource competition. Decreasing Container 2's limit to two CPUs would actually restrict Container 2 below its three CPU request, making things worse. Think of it this way. Removing limits is like telling both chefs, you're guaranteed your minimum burners, but feel free to use any extra ones when they're free. Question 22. You have an Azure subscription that uses Azure Container Instances. You have a computer that has Azure Command Line Interface, CLI, and Docker installed. You create a container image named Image1. You need to provision a new Azure Container Registry and add Image1 to the registry. Which command should you run to add Image1 to the registry? We already have a registry created. The task now is to upload push the local image called Image1 into that registry so it becomes available to Azure services. Think of it like copying a file from your laptop to cloud storage. Options, AZACR, create, AZ container, create Docker, pull Docker push. Imagine you just baked a cake, Image1, in your kitchen. The Azure container registry is the bakery display case where customers can later pick it up. To get the cake into the display case, you physically place it there. In Docker terms, that action is the docker push command. Correct answer. Docker push. Docker push uploads, pushes your locally tagged container image to the specified Azure container registry. After logging into the registry and tagging the image with the registry's login server name, running docker push registry.azurecr.io slash image1 v1 transfers the layers so the image is stored in Azure and ready for deployment. Why the other options are incorrect. AZACR create creates a new registry. It does not transfer images. AZ container create launches a running container instance from an existing image. It doesn't move images into a registry. Docker pull downloads an image from a registry to your local machine, the opposite direction of what we need here. Question 23. You have an Azure subscription that uses Azure container instances. You have a computer that has Azure command line interface, CLI, and Docker installed. You create a container image named Image1. You need to provision a new Azure container registry and add Image1 to the registry. Which command should you run to provision a new container registry? The task is to provision, create a brand new Azure container registry, ACR. That's like setting up the warehouse before you store any images. We're looking for the specific Azure CLI command that performs the create action. Options, AZ ACR build, AZ ACR create, AZ container, create Docker create. Think of ACR as a private Docker hub in Azure. Before uploading images, you first need to spin up that private registry. 
Only one command here literally says create an ACR, which matches our need. Correct answer. AZ ACR create. The AZ ACR command provisions a new Azure container registry. It lets you specify resource group, registry name, SKU, basic, standard, or premium, and other settings. Once the registry is created, you can log in and push your image one there. Why the other options are incorrect. AZ ACR build builds or builds and pushes an image inside an existing registry, doesn't create the registry itself. AZ container create spins up a running container instance, not a registry. Docker create creates a container locally on your machine, unrelated to Azure registry creation. Question 24. Note, this question is part of a series of questions that present the same scenario. Each question in the series contains a unique solution that might meet the stated goals. You have an Azure virtual machine named VM1. VM1 was deployed by using a custom Azure resource manager template named arm1.json. You receive a notification that VM1 will be affected by maintenance. You need to move VM1 to a different host immediately. Solution. From the overview blade, you move the virtual machine to a different resource group. Does this meet the goal? This question is testing whether you understand the difference between logical organization, resource groups, and physical infrastructure, actual host servers. When Azure says move to a different host, it means moving the VM to run on a different physical server to avoid maintenance downtime. The options are A, yes, B, no. Think of this like organizing your desk drawers versus moving to a completely different office building. Moving a VM to a different resource group is like moving files from one desk drawer to another. You're just reorganizing, but you're still in the same building, same physical host. To avoid maintenance, you need to actually move to a different building, different physical server. Correct answer, no. Moving a virtual machine to a different resource group does not move it to a different physical host. Resource groups are purely logical containers for organizing and managing Azure resources. They're like folders that help you organize your resources. When you move a VM between resource groups, you're only changing its organizational structure within Azure. The VM continues running on the exact same physical server, host, as before. This means VM1 would still be affected by the planned maintenance. Why this solution doesn't work? Resource group moves only change logical organization, not physical location. The VM remains on the same underlying Azure host hardware. Maintenance notifications are tied to the physical infrastructure, not resource group membership. What would actually work? To move a VM to a different host immediately, you would need to use features like VM redeployment or redeploy the VM to a new node, which physically relocates the VM to different hardware. Question 25. You have two Azure virtual machines as shown in the following table. You create the Azure DNS zones shown in the following table. You perform the following actions. To Fabricam.com, you add a virtual network link to VNet1 and enable auto-registration. For Contoso.com, you assign VM1 and VM2 the owner role. For the following statement, select yes if the statement is true. Otherwise, select no. The DNSA record for VM2 is added to Fabricam.com and has the IP address of 10.1.5. This question tests your understanding of Azure private DNS zones and the auto-registration feature. When you link a virtual network to a private DNS zone with auto-registration enabled, Azure automatically creates DNSA records for all VMs in that virtual network using their private IP addresses. The options are A, yes, B, no. Think of auto-registration like having an automatic phone book that updates itself. When you connect a building, virtual network, to this phone book system, private DNS zone, and turn on auto-updates, Every person, VM, in that building automatically gets their name and internal phone number, private IP, added to the phone book. It doesn't matter what department they work in or their job title. Everyone gets added. Correct answer. Yes. The statement is true. Here's the step-by-step -step reasoning. When you create a virtual network link to Fabricam.com, the private DNS zone, and enable auto-registration, Azure's auto-registration feature automatically creates DNSA records for all virtual machines in the linked virtual network, VNet1. Since both VM1 and VM2 are connected to VNet1, and VNet1 is linked to Fabricam.com with auto-registration enabled, DNSA records will be created for both VMs in the Fabricam.com zone. Key points that make this true. 
VM2 is in VNet1, which is linked to Fabricam.com with auto registration enabled. Auto registration creates a records automatically, no manual action required, uses private IP addresses. The A record will use VM2's private IP, 10.01.5, not the public IP. DNS suffix doesn't matter. Even though VM2 shows none for DNS suffix, auto registration still works. The fact that VM1 and VM2 were assigned owner roles to Contoso.com is irrelevant to this question. That action doesn't affect the auto registration behavior in Fabricom.com.